Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got something a little bit different. Uh, I've got a rusty pipe here from one of the KX65s that I recently picked up, and we're going to try and remove the rust. What we're going to do is we're going to use electrolysis to get this rust off this pipe. So I had to pick up some supplies for this. I got a really cheap power supply on Amazon. I got some super washing soda. I also got some solid copper core 12 gauge wire and some one foot lengths of rebar. I'm gonna be using a storage tote for the container. The pipe fits in here nicely and I had a couple lying around. So I'm gonna drill some holes in the container as well as the rebar. This way I can pass some of the copper wire through the container and hold the rebar in place. I found it easier to hold the rebar in place by passing the wire through the center of it instead of wrapping it around. So I just strung the rebar together here using the copper wire. It's important to note that you should not use stainless steel in this application. Doing so can create some carcinogens in the soup that you're about to create, and that's not going to be good for you or the environment. I took some string and I tied up the exhaust pipe to some scrap wood I had laying around, and this is just to get it off the bottom and kind of keep it centered in the container. I cut a piece of wire off and I attached it to the pipe itself, uh, making sure that it was wrapped around there really tight, making good contact. This is going to be our cathode line. You want to make sure it's suspended and not touching any of the rebar. So next up I added about 15 gallons of water. It was a little bit more water than I thought I was going to need and I made a complete mess pouring it into this container. With the pipe mostly covered, we can go ahead and add our washing soda. It's important to note that this is washing soda, not baking soda. I had to go to Walmart to find this. I couldn't find it anywhere else. So I mixed in about 15 tablespoons, one per gallon, and uh, mixed it up as best as I could. I did pick up a GFCI outlet protector. Don't know if this would have helped, but uh, working with a bunch of water and a power supply on a bench, figured it would at least put my mind at ease. Okay, so here's the important part. You're gonna wanna attach your red or positive line to the anodes, which is the string of rebar, and you're going to want to attach the negative to the cathode line, which is connected directly to your pipe. Doing so in the reverse order will cause your pipe to deteriorate, so you wanna make sure to get this absolutely right. So I cranked this baby up to 12 volts at about six amps, and this is a little high, but it got the process kicked off and we started seeing a lot of bubbles from both the pipe and the rebar. I later cranked this down to about 6 volts at 2.5 amps and let that crank for a while. So I turned the power supply off for about an hour and let everything settle to the bottom of the container. I kind of wanted to see how the pipe looked at this point. And when I turn the power supply back on, you can see just how many bubbles are forming on the surface of the pipe. It's important to note that hydrogen is flammable and explosive at certain concentrations. Flammable in as low as 4% uh, concentration in the atmosphere. I am working in a well-ventilated garage. I did have a couple fears that, you know, something might spark, catch fire. So it would probably be ideal to do this outside. So after two days sitting in the tub, I pulled the pipe out and I gave it a little scrub with a sponge just to see how the condition was doing and it looked pretty good, so I decided to pull it out. Afterwards, I took some super clean and a scotch brite pad to the pipe and it cleaned up really well.
After cleaning up the surface a bit with the scotch spray, I took it outside for a couple coats of VHT Flame Proof Satin Clear. Going off the instructions, I did two light coats followed by a third pretty wet coat. This paint also requires curing and that's done through heat cycling on the bike. Alright, now let's take a close up look at the results. Thanks for hanging out with me in the garage, and I'll see you on the next one.